Given the enormous popularity and influence of the TV series The Chosen, both in Christian circles and outside, I felt that it was really important to make this video talking about some of my concerns. I did a previous video where I spoke about some of my concerns off screen, some of the influences behind the production of the show, and this particular video I will talk about my on screen concerns and mention specific scenes that are problematic for me in this show. Any time that the world applauds something Christian, I get very skeptical. Because the world never applauded Jesus, because Jesus brought uncompromising truth which would divide people. Those who chose the truth and those who chose to live a lie. But we see here with this TV series, The Chosen, there is such a, a broad appeal, an ecumenical appeal between different faith traditions as well as in the world also. Now Jesus was offensive and he spoke uncompromising truth that would offend people that didn't want to accept the truth that he spoke. This truth doesn't unite people, it divides people. And Jesus himself said, I did not come to bring peace, but to bring a sword. Now the goal of the creator Dallas Jenkins is to portray the authentic Jesus, but there's a difference between attempting to portray the authentic Jesus and actually achieving this. In this video, I'm not questioning the motives or intent of Dallas Jenkins, but rather I'm highlighting his extreme lack of discernment in some of the parts of the show, which either are completely unbiblical or are implausible uh, in terms of adding creative content to the biblical account. Now, when it comes to critiquing a show like this, often people that point out a number of the things that I'm going to point out in this video actually get attacked by the followers of The Chosen because the show is so universally loved. People say you're nitpicking, you're being negative, you're being judgmental, you're jealous of the influence of the show. But isn't it amazing? just like in Jesus' day, that those people who have true discernment and those people who care about biblical accuracy and portraying the true Jesus that God has revealed in his word are made out to be the bad guys. So the show aims to portray the authentic Jesus. Nowhere are we called to portray any version of Jesus other than the biblical version of Jesus. And this is incredibly dangerous because Jesus is no more real, no more authentic, no more alive than he actually is in the revealed word of God. This is God's revelation to man of who Jesus Christ, the one true God, the eternal son is. And any attempt to actually add to that or to make him more authentic or more alive will actually distort him and make him less authentic and less alive because he's no more alive than what he is in the Bible. So they're trying to make Jesus more alive. They're trying to show his humanity. They're trying to, they're giving him a personality, a sense of humor, and, and trying to get people to connect emotionally with this Jesus. It's all about emotion rather than people connecting with God in truth as is presented in the word of God. And you see, the problem with this is that, that it might be very interesting giving Jesus this personality and people are connecting with this Jesus and people are saying, well, why are you questioning this? It's leading more people to Jesus. But what Jesus is it leading people to? The Jesus of the Bible or the Jesus of the chosen? It's very interesting giving people personalities, but this is made up. This is fiction. This isn't true. We even see with um, the disciple Matthew, they make him autistic. Now, people say, I love this because the, the disciples have different personalities. Isn't it so interesting? Um, they make it really come alive. But the thing is that it might be interesting, but they don't have that personality. That is not the disciples. That is not Jesus. These are made up characters. This is fan fiction. And when you're connecting with the show and saying, I'm feeling closer to Jesus, you're actually feeling closer to the character of Jesus in the show, The Chosen, rather than the true Jesus. And any attempt to, to add any personality, any humanity, any of these sort of things is actually distorting the true Jesus. And the danger of this is that when people actually then have this in their mind and they're so influenced emotionally and they go to read the Bible, they're reading these things from the show into the Bible that aren't actually in the Bible and it's actually obscuring people's understanding distorting the image of Jesus and the biblical accounts. They're carrying that with them when they're reading the Bible. 
And this is incredibly dangerous. It actually stops them from receiving the true revelation that God is giving to them through the word by filling their mind with other things that just simply aren't true. And for those of us who take biblical integrity and the revelation of Jesus Christ by God the Father in his word very seriously, this is a concern. One of the biggest problems that I have is the tone of the character of this Jesus. We see in the Bible that he came from the very beginning preaching repentance for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was a message of, as I said, repentance, repenting of sin. But this, this character here doesn't seem to preach that message. That's not his central message as the Jesus of the Bible. There's a scene in particular where he says, I did not come to call the righteous, but I came to call sinners. And then it leaves off the word to repentance. It just makes it more palatable. It makes it inoffensive. You don't have to repent of your sin. You don't have to change your ways. Jesus is just going to accept you as you are as a sinner because he, he loves you with this love that just accepts you. This love that isn't founded in, in truth. Where true love will tell someone truth. It's just a very palatable, inoffensive portrayal of Jesus which is nothing like the Jesus of the Bible who spoke of judgment, who spoke of hell, who said that he came to divide people, not to bring peace. Yes, he loved people, but if they weren't prepared to come and follow him on his terms, then they would remain behind as he went on. It's almost a progressive Christianity version of Jesus who loves everyone, is offensive to no one, and therefore convicts no one of sin. And that's highly problematic because Jesus came to the world to convict the world of sin. So I'm going to get into some of the specific scenes that are concerning to me now. My mate Caleb from I Think Biblically did a great video breaking some of this down and actually showing the scenes as well. I'm going to link his video uh, in the description at the end of this one. So the first scene that I'm going to bring up is the healing of the paralytic. We see in the Bible that it is clearly men that are involved in this, bringing the paralytic, their idea, bringing the paralytic, lowering down. In the chosen, they replace the men with women. Now, some might say, well, what's the big deal about that? Look, I can understand people adding artistic license to a show. I don't agree with it, but I can at least understand where they're coming from. But why would you actually change something that's clearly written in the Bible? Was the account not good enough? That's what I don't get. There's another scene where Mary Magdalene is praying um, before the, the Shabbat. This is unthinkable to have a woman praying this prayer at this time in first century Israel. It's completely unplausible. It never would have happened. And then there are scenes where uh, Mary Magdalene is referring to Mary, the mother of Jesus, as Mother Mary, which smacks of that ecumenical appeal and Catholicism. Why would the show elevate the role of women, including Mary Magdalene, to a level that is completely unbiblical? Are they embarrassed of the role of women in the Bible? Are they trying to make it more palatable culturally today for the 21st century? This is a concern. Another concern for me is the scene where Andrew is dancing and uh, Simon Peter asks Jesus, uh, is there anything you can do to, to help Andrew with his dancing? And Jesus says something along the lines of, there are even some things I can't do. Now, I don't think this is purposed as an attack on his deity, but it's clumsy, it's irreverent, and it's confusing for the audiences as well. You're trying to portray the authentic Jesus, the eternal son of God. I don't think Jesus would be joking around about his divinity and his limitations and what he can and can't do. It's just very clumsy and it doesn't portray the, the Jesus of the Bible with, with the reverence that he deserves. There's also a scene where Nicodemus comes to Jesus and Jesus tells him to follow his heart. Now people might say, what's wrong with that? The Bible says that the heart is desperately wicked. It is sick. Who can know it? 
The Bible actually never tells us to follow our heart. It tells us to follow truth, even if our emotions and our feelings are telling us the opposite. This whole this notion of following our heart is something we see in culture today. Be true to yourself. Do what you think is right. This is the complete opposite of what the Bible tells us to do, which is to lay that aside and pursue truth, even if we don't feel like doing that. Another scene with Nicodemus where he gets down to worship Jesus and Jesus says that he, he doesn't have to worship him. Could you imagine Jesus, the eternal God, ever telling anyone, you don't have to worship me? It is completely irreverent. It is, it is completely implausible. And it just lowers who Jesus is, making him this more human, matey, matey type of Jesus rather than the eternal son of God. Another thing that's incredibly problematic to me is the disciples calling John the Baptist creepy John. This might seem like a little bit of a joke, but this is incredibly disrespectful. John the Baptist was called the greatest of men born among women. He was also filled with the Holy Spirit. And they're making jokes even after they're following Jesus, calling him creepy John. This, this is just completely irreverent and makes the character of John the Baptist look silly when he was really the greatest of men born of women, completely lacking in reverence. There's also a scene as well where John the Baptist and Jesus are talking about confronting Herod over his sin. And John the Baptist is saying that he's going to confront Herod. Jesus is saying, oh, do you want to maybe think about that? And maybe that's not a good idea. I mean, first of all, could you imagine Jesus telling someone not to confront someone over sin. And then could you imagine John the Baptist who said that I'm not worthy to untie the strap of his sandal, arguing and debating with Jesus about what he should do. This scene is just wrong on so many levels. And, and, and it just causes so much confusion about who these characters actually are in the Bible. There's another crazy scene where Jesus is practicing the Sermon on the Mount. Could you imagine Jesus just standing there practicing? As if he's looking in front of a mirror or something today, just practicing a sermon before a Sunday. He was given the words to speak by his father. He spoke his father's words. He was full of the spirit. He didn't sit around practicing sermons. And, and, and what is even worse than that is there's a scene where the disciple Matthew is giving him advice. He's telling him what to put into the sermons. Can, I mean, this is, this is unthinkable. This is just bringing Jesus down to the level of... Uh, some sort of Sunday preacher that's, that's getting input from his friends of what he should preach. <laughs> Jesus spoke the words of the Father and he spoke of the Holy Spirit. He didn't need any men to give him lines for his sermons. There's another scene where John is uh, sitting with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and she's actually giving him information to include in his gospel account. And he's writing down notes as if it was her idea the, the very last part of his gospel to, to include that bit in there. It's completely unthinkable. There's also a scene where Jesus is arrested prior to his arrest in the garden. And we see that um, in the Bible it says he, he continually escaped the arrest of people when the crowds tried to get hold of him, when the authorities tried to get hold of him, because his time had not yet come. Yet here he's getting arrested prior to his arrest in the garden. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. It just contradicts what the Bible says. So these are just some of the scenes that I've included in, and I'll leave it there for the sake of time. But there are much more that could be included. There's much more that could be said about this. But I just want to say that the, the, the Jesus of the chosen is not the Jesus of the Bible. And as I said, there's an incredible danger. People will go, oh, it's just a TV show. It's helping people get closer to Jesus to get a passion to read their word more. But which Jesus is it getting people closer to? And how is it distorting the, the, the image of Jesus in their mind when they do get into reading the word of God? Why do we need something to make Jesus more authentic and more alive when God has revealed it here in his truth? This is the means by which God has revealed Jesus to us. And anyone who is truly discerning, anyone who is truly hungering for truth will go straight to the word to get the revelation of Jesus. Because as I said, anything else will only distort the true Jesus. And these things in the show are incredibly good at doing that, at distorting the true Jesus. God doesn't need the help of anyone in portraying an authentic Jesus, in making Jesus come alive. 
And people that are watching this show are getting an emotional high. It's all about making people feel emotional. You're connecting on an emotional level with a fictional character in a fictional show. The Bible says that we are to worship God in spirit and in truth. The people in this show are worshiping God in emotion and in fiction, and it's incredibly problematic. The Bible says that even a little leaven leavens the whole batch. And even a little bit of distortion of the person of Jesus Christ, and this show has a lot of distortion, even a little bit of it distorts the person of Jesus. And I just want to encourage you, you, you should not need anything to get you more passionate about reading the Bible. This is the problem today, is we pander to people's short attention spans, we pander to people's emotions, we try to connect with them on a level that God never wanted to connect with us on. Rather than getting us all motivated, when we feel like we want to read the Bible, we're going to go and read the Bible, and wow, now this show's helped me to read the Bible. We need to make a conscious decision to say that God commands us to read His Word, if we read the word, we're going to find Jesus in it. I may not feel like doing that, but I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to read it. And then when we read it, we're going to start to feel our hunger and passion for Jesus. It's not the other way around. The Jesus that we see in the Bible was going to be God's pure, unadulterated, uncompromised revelation of who he is. Why would you want to watch anything else when you can spend your time here, a direct word from God? So is it a sin to watch The Chosen? Some people would say, yes, I can't go as far as to say it's a sin. No, it's not a sin, in my opinion. But would I recommend it? Absolutely not. Because it's incredibly problematic, especially for the undiscerning. Share this video with friends. We need people to at least know these things about the show, to have this perspective so that they can make up their minds for themselves with all of the information. As I said, I did another video where I talked about some of the problems off the screen. I'll put that in the description below. I'll put that on the screen also. You can click on that and watch that. At Line of Fire Ministries, I like to do short videos that encourage, inspire, challenge, and convict. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, subscribe and hit the bell to receive notifications. One, one thing I can guarantee you in watching this channel is you're going to get truth every single time and you're going to get all facets of truth. Like on a video like this, you're going to be challenged, you're going to be convicted, you're also going to get other videos where you're going to be encouraged and inspired. And the main purpose of this ministry is to help you to, to know God more, to become more like Jesus and to equip you to preach the gospel, to do God's work, to extend the kingdom of God. Thank you so much for watching, friends. May you be blessed. Share this video and we'll talk to you soon. If you'd like to support this ministry, you can become a monthly supporter on Patreon, offer a one-off donation on PayPal, or visit the Line of Fire store. All the links are in the description below. Let's extend the kingdom of God together.